Da Vinci's horse was a 24-foot high sculpture commissioned in 1482 by Ludovico Sforza, the Duke of Milan. The horse was intended to be the largest equestrian statue in the world, a monument to the Duke's father, Francesco Sforza. Leonardo worked on the commission for almost 20 years, detailing a revolutionary method to cast the work in bronze, as justified in his carefully created notebooks. Based on ancient Greek and Roman examples, the horse type primarily realized in the Renaissance were the finest horses from the Iberian Peninsula, bred with other similar horse types throughout Europe. This horse type was widespread in the 15th through 17th centuries, the treasured mount of Europe's nobility, military officers, and gentry. Many Renaissance painters depicted this distinct, elegant horse with its arched, muscular neck, low tail set, convex head profile, natural high step movement, and long mane and tail. For his horse, Leonardo sought classical proportions based on measurements from existing ancient Greek and Roman equestrian statues. This Renaissance concept is depicted here by another well-known Italian master, Raphael. In this drawing, Raphael noted the measurements from one such marble horse which still exists in Rome. Measuring classical proportions to the ideal horse type was a rather obsessive Renaissance practice, as seen here in a German print to the left and in a 1585 Italian manuscript below. Da Vinci would apply this same system upon the ideal living horse model, which he would measure and draw from the life. In December 1493, Leonardo stated his readiness to begin the groundbreaking casting process, which was successful, but the monument had a short-lived existence. In November 1494, the Duke gave the 75 tons of bronze used for the sculpture to his father-in-law, who forged cannons to defend Milan from invasion by Charles VIII. Through the centuries, the molds for the horse were lost forever, and the full-scale clay model, which was used for reference points and lines to indicate attached parts, was destroyed by the invading French soldiers, who used it as target practice. In 1999, based on his surviving notebooks and equine sketches, da Vinci's 24-foot-high bronze sculpture was realized again in modern times, and now stands in Milan, Italy. One of the eight-foot-tall replicas of da Vinci's horse resides in Sheridan, Wyoming. The horse is faithful to Leonardo's original drawings and reflects the spirit of da Vinci and the Renaissance. Yet, in a broader context, the significance of the horse stands as a symbol of permanence against the destructiveness of war and as a symbol of friendship between nations. Many of the working sketches for the horse were lost over the centuries. However, one set of notebooks, known as the Windsor Collection, came into the possession of the British royal family during the reign of Charles II, which included original drawings by Leonardo that have been together as a group since the artist's death in 1519. Select drawings from this surviving notebook in the royal collection will now be presented, 
showcasing da Vinci's fond interest in the equine, included our monument and measurement studies and the horse directly drawn from the life. The Codex Huygens is a handwritten, hand-drawn Renaissance manuscript for a treatise on painting closely related to Leonardo da Vinci. Its author has been identified as the North Italian artist Carlo Urbino, who must have been familiar with da Vinci's notes before they were dispersed. Some of the drawings in this manuscript are considered faithful copies of now-lost originals by Leonardo. The name of the Codex goes back to its former owner, Constantin Huygens, secretary to King William III of England. Huygens acquired the manuscript in 1690, firmly believing it to be an autographed work by da Vinci. The extant manuscript, with 128 pages, is in the collection of the Morgan Library and Museum and appears to be a fragment. The text of the manuscript reveals that there were to be 14 books. Perhaps these were never completed in the copying process by Urbino, or likely the complete codex has been disbound, scattered, and lost over the centuries. Only five books exist today. Form and Structure of the Human Body, Movements of the Human Body, Transformations, proportions of the human body and proportions of the horse, and lastly, perspective. A substantial portion of these remaining books contain illustrations, as seen below, which have been copied by Urbino from Leonardo's own drawings. From the folios regarding the proportions of the horse, scholars have discovered the type of horse and the name of the horse that Leonardo would select as his model for the Sforza monument. But before this is revealed, some of the folios of equine drawings will be presented first for the understanding of da Vinci's working mindset. To the modern eye, these measurements appear confusing and unnecessary. However, there is a logic to this. I shall explain with brief simplicity according to my present knowledge. Renaissance artists would always approach all visual considerations from general to specific. This is true in their manner of seeing, in developing compositional designs, 
and also in both their drawing and painting process. The same general to specific mindset is also applied for proportions and measurements. Here, Da Vinci begins with the general, that is, basic proportions of a horse's head in profile divided in four equal parts. These proportions were likely based on existing equine sculptures from ancient Greece and Rome. The same four parts are seen in the frontal view of the horse's face to include the ears, creating five equal parts. Notice that additional measurements become more specific, indicated with marks halfway in between. These exterior measurements are specific indications where convex and some concave outstrokes or contours begin and end. The inside straight line measurements are based on the concept of quantitative proportions, which measure the roundness or thickness of bodies or objects. These measurements are labeled from contour to contour. However, they record a certain three-dimensional circumference. This is accomplished by a flexible tape measure wrapped around a horse's leg or bulging surface. Additional drawings with measurements follow. On the upper part of Folio 78, we see written Gianetto Grosso. Gianetto could likely come from the Italian word ghiaetto, which means jet, a gemstone described to be of a velvety black color. The Italian word grosso means extremely or exceedingly. Thus, could this be a description of the living horse model as being exceedingly velvety black? In these drawings, Leonardo appeared to be comparing two different horse sizes or horse types. The Sforzo monument is based on an impressive stallion, and curiously, we see, written in the upper corner, frissone, a French word based on the Italian word frissoni, which means a native or inhabitant of Frisia. In English, the word translates to Frisian. Frisia is an old ancient country dating back to 500 BC when people first settled along the coast of the North Sea. They were tradesmen, seafarers, farmers, and horse breeders. Before the Vikings also took to the seas in 800 to 1000 AD, Frisians were the great seaborne traders. At the start of the Christian era, Frisian troops were documented in Britannia and their Frisian horses were used in battle. By the Middle Ages, monks in Frisia were breeding horses, a cross between the larger docile European forest horse with lighter spirited oriental types like the Barb and Turkomans. When Spain ruled the Frisia area from 1568 to 1648, their Andalusian horses likely crossed with the Frisian horse type. It's important to remember that during the early part of human history, horses were not recognized as breeds. Instead, they were labeled based on their purpose and or their origins. Actual breed names apparently began to appear after the Renaissance, especially into the 17 and 1800s, when breeding horses became a fashionable pastime of the wealthy. They would replicate fine-looking horses to a strict conformational and recognizable breed standard and begin stud book registries. The best known example is the thoroughbred, a very specific man-made creation 
of an equine sport athlete. Meanwhile, during the Renaissance, the Friesland horse type had a distinctive arched neck, a long full mane, low tail set, a showy high step movement, convex face profile, moderately feathered fetlocks, and an elegant upright carriage, as seen in this etching. Friesland horses were also unique, for they came in only one color, jet black. Here the artist perhaps chose not to portray a completely black horse, wanting instead to emphasize the equine's muscular features and its classical appearance. Such a graceful black horse also appears in 17th century Dutch paintings. The ancient black equine was almost extinct by the early part of the 1900s. With the need for horses capable of heavier agricultural and industrial use, Frisians were rapidly being crossbred with draft horses. Today, from the immediate onset of global preservation programs and regulations set by the Frisian government, the horse has been saved and modernized to become a popular competitive sport horse, excelling in dressage, driving, and recreational riding. Continuing with the drawings from the Codex Huygens, the name of the horse that Leonardo used as his live model will now be revealed. Written on the top corner is this designation, Siciliano. The same name appears in the right folio. Siciliano also is written on several other folios. Siciliano was this magnificent creature the Duke's father's favorite horse? Was Siciliano a treasured gift from another noble? Or perhaps Leonardo's personal choice of the ideal living horse from which to base the statue? These questions are left for expert da Vinci scholars and equine historians to answer. For now, the evidence found in the Codex Huygens establishes the true identity of this impressive stallion forever immortalized into a bronze statue made after the great Italian master Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs>